Okay. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to call to order the meeting. Tuesday, September the 8th, 2015, Community Redevelopment Agency. It's approximately 6.18 p.m. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Board Member Burgess? Here. Board Member Wallman? Board Member Williams? Here. Board Member Maldonado? Here. Vice Chairman Shelley? Here. Chairman Porter? Here. Uh, any deletions or deferrals? Mr. Uh, tab 1 is the approval of, of minutes. Is there a motion? Is there a second? Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Uh, tab 2, Mr. Manager? Mayor, we have uh, Steve Scott that will be giving the presentation. Mayor, I'll, I'll go ahead and introduce the resolution. Resolution of the Board of Community Redevelopment Agency of the City of Homestead, Florida, approving the Community Redevelopment Agency budget for fiscal year 2015-2016 and directing the City Manager or its designee to submit the budget to Miami-Dade County for the City Council for their respective approval and providing for an effective date. Thank you very much uh, uh, to the board. Uh, my name is Stephen Scott, and I'm the executive director of the City of Homestead Community Redevelopment Agency. I'm going to uh, do a brief presentation just outlining uh, the budget that you all have in your packets, um, some of the highlights. Uh, this is uh, what I call a sort of a good news, bad news slide. And I'll uh, start with the good news, which is that um, after, you know, so a devastating uh, fall since 2010, uh, the last two years, and this year in particular, um, revenues, TIF revenues are starting to rise. Um, this year, our, our revenue generated by tax increment funds is uh, $2,076,094. The bad news is that uh, five years ago, our uh, revenues were $4,212,432. So even though things are getting better and, and uh, we anticipate some, some more uh, improvements next year, uh, we're still nowhere near where we were in terms of TIF collections. Uh, really briefly, um, the, other than the, uh, the TIF revenue collections, we have uh, uh, $37,000 interest on investments, and we have $428,000 uh, that is bring, bringing, being brought forward from last year's budget. So the total amount that we have to work with this year is $2.541 million, and that is the, the figure that we use to prepare the budget. Uh, the expenses for the CRA uh, are spread out into different categories. Uh, the largest one being our programs, which uh, amount to approximately $1.017 million. Uh, next, we have our debt that we have to uh, pay every year. That figure, fortunately, is going down every year and will expire in 2020. Uh, but this year, our here, what we're, what's called our hero debt, uh, which was taken out back when the CRA was in was founded back in 1995 is $349,000. Uh, employee costs are approximately $450,000. Um, administrative costs, which covers a multitude of categories, uh, totals $355,000. And the category we call other are just multiple different uh, operational expenses that we have at the CRA but they go towards our uh, projects and our programs. Um, and that number is $360,000. And the total is $2,541,567. Two uh, some of our programs, uh, I'm sure most, most of you are familiar, our housing rehabilitation program is funded in this budget uh, for $100,000. Our uh, commercial enhancement programs is funded for $200,000. Sorry. 
our assistance to not-for-profit organizations uh, is funded uh, for $100,000. And uh, community, sorry, community policing code enforcement, uh, this figure, $251,471, is what we have budgeted this year for that program. Uh, of uh, of course, we, that is about half what it was last year, and that's because uh, the city manager has moved one police officer and one uh, code compliance officer back to the general fund. Um, however, service levels are being maintained. Um, but it does, it does help uh, the CRA with its budget. And uh, a couple of you, I believe, have, have mentioned to me since I've been here and to the manager that that's something that you would like to see happen, and we were able to start that process this year. And one of our larger expenditures is uh, neighborhood beautification programs. Um, that's our ground maintenance contract, which is uh, we work in conjunction with Parks and Recreation, and we fund uh, that contract to, uh, for about $229,600. And we have two inmate crews that we pay for. Also, we work hand-in-hand uh, -hand with the Parks Department. Um, and we pay $91,800 for litter removal, graffiti removal, and uh, ancillary maintenance uh, around the Southwest. Uh, basically, that's a very brief summary. Um, I do want to uh, just point out a couple of things. One is that we have uh, $191,000 that we earmarked and you all approved for demolitions this year. That money is not lost. It's being rolled over into, it, it's been encumbered, and we will have those funds to proceed with demolitions uh, this year. And I'm happy to report we, uh, we have, um, we're probably just a week or two away from our first uh, demolition. Uh, and we'll have another one uh, ready to go. Both of those properties are uh, in the southwest. Um, at this point, I just want to thank you all. I, uh, this is my first budget uh, presenting to you. Um, and, and the time I've been here, I've been really enjoyed working and getting to know all of you. And uh, I am available uh, to answer any questions that you may have regarding our budget. Thank you, Steve. And uh, questions from the board? Uh, Mr. Williams? Yeah. Thank you. Now, this is just, help me understand this. Is this just option one? This is what you, what's option two? Uh, there, we, we are not presenting option two, uh, Councilman Williams. We are, we are presenting as our budget, our original. I'm sorry, it's so hard to see you because I, I know. the dais is and the podium is not, uh, it's not, it's not, it's the, it's, uh, what's her name? Uh, Liz, it's her. I can't hardly see. The, Okay. Maybe you need to move the podium up. The staff may need to move the podium up. Assuming I can do this, I will. Yeah. Uh, there's a wire here. I don't Steven, want to I would suggest you sit in your chair there and answer questions. That'll be that. fine. Yeah. My question is, is number one, um, tell me what is the, because you have two different, um, in the budget book, you have one set of terms, and then in our packet, you have another set of terms. And what I mean by that is the, the account, the account description, uh, so in your regular packet with everything in it, the black our book that we have, not the budget book. But you have actual revenues, adopted budget, adjusted budget, and adopted budget for 2016. But then in our budget book, you have actual expenses, adopted budget, adjusted budget, and proposed budget. What is all of that? I mean, we, you've got so many different titles in the budget book. I don't know which one to follow. So would you break each of those down? Well, what I can tell you is the numbers that we're dealing with here tonight are, is our proposed budget for, two, that for fiscal year 2016. Um, I'm not sure that I'm able, I can necessarily explain I'm not, the difference between your budget book and something else, but I would go with um, finances, uh, with the budget okay. you receive from finance for the purposes of this meeting. 
And, and in any event, either either way, it would be the proposed budget for fiscal year 2016 right, but, that we're but, presenting. But on some of the areas within your budget or the finance budget, there, there, some of them are different numbers. So that's why I'm asking and the categories, are, are they different? And the categories listed at the top action, in um, our agenda packet, not the budget, actual revenues, adopted budget, adjusted budget, and adopted budget. Then in your budget book, you have actual expenses, adopted budget, adjusted budget, and proposed budget. Okay. They're, they're all... The four, the four columns, it should be actual revenues for 2014, adopted budget for 2015, adjusted budget for 2015, and proposed budget for 2016. If it shows anything else, then we apologize for, for, for the mistake. But those should be the four columns. So not the one, is it the one we're going off in the budget book or in our, in our, in our packet of agenda? It should be the same. Okay. Because they all mean something different. Well, the budget, the budget book, uh, Carlos, is what we're proposing and what they'd be voting on tonight, correct? Right. Well, shouldn't it be the same, George, in our binder? It shouldn't be any difference, though, shouldn't it? I'm not, you know, truthfully, I'm not really sure what you're referring to. So. Let me show you. Councilman, the car item and the budget book, they have the same titles. The numbers are all the same. Right. It's just yeah. a label. Right. Yeah, I do. Uh, the, if you look in your your budget books, the uh, the difference is a label. One says proposed and one says adopted, but it's the same thing. The one where, where it says fiscal year 2016. It, whichever version you're looking at, they're all meant to be the same, which is proposed 2016. All right. I just I, I wanted to clear that up because in my um, in my questions of, of of some of these things, and what I have provided to my colleagues is a breakdown because I thought we had two options uh, today, but since they're only presenting option one, let me thank uh, the administration and George and his staff for taking out. Um, the uh, one police officer and one code, uh, that was one of my main uh, things that I had asked, see if we can move it to the general fund. But what I want to highlight to you um, for my colleagues here at the dais is that 44% of that $2.5 million uh, is going towards uh, administration. Only 4% is going towards the southwest neighborhood and 10 percent of that budget is going towards public safety and the projects now so if you can explain to me what the projects are would you list the projects for me sure uh we have uh marketing uh pro professional services parking facilities and management consultant so how much is marketing uh we have 190,000 in marketing. And what page is that on? Uh, page, if you look at uh, the, it's page 54 of the budget. Um, it's four items down. Yeah. So. What, 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 tell me why we're spending a hundred and ninety dollars in marketing. What are we marketing? Uh, yeah, uh, we are marketing. Well, now it, these are my pie charts. These are not staff. These are my pie charts. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, the marketing, uh, fifty thousand dollars, is going to go towards the Seminole Theater opening. Um, 
$25,000 is uh, earmarked as our contribution towards um, ICSC, uh, the booth. Uh, $15,000 is scheduled for other openings. And we have $100,000 that we have in there for uh, future downtown-related uh, expenses, um, just because we know from experience that there are uh, many things that come up where, where we have needed money and, and haven't had it. And so since we were able to, we, we have the money there. So why didn't you just kind of break it out in, so that we'll know that that amount of money is going for a similar theater, this amount is going for that? What, um, uh, because I well, think... We do we do that in our in our budget preparation. I, I it doesn't make we, we because every if we did that for every single and it's not a CRA thing or a city thing. It's just if we broke down every single line item into every single thing we we paid for it, your budget what you would get in front of you would be you know 500 pages. Okay. Uh, also, uh, Mayor, may I continue, please, since I am the, you allowed me to be the chair for the finance. Thank you. The um, the costs on the administrative side, uh, how how I mean that's that's quite a bit really. That's if you take out um, the retained earnings from last year, we're what about one point what seven or one point eight? About two point oh one million. Two point so a, a million dollars that is going just to keep the, the doors open of the CRA, right? No, I, well, I, unfortunately, I don't. Uh, I see the pie chart. I don't know what numbers you use to come up with. That. I used a 2.5. No, I'm talking about the. You're talking about the administrative expenses. Right. I'm not sure because that's not consistent with with uh, with my understanding of of our budget. And I know that the our budget has. I just to get went off. I just went off your administration. The 1.116696. We, and if you put, do that in percentages, 44 percent. Councilman, I think uh, all the, the numbers that we uh, view as uh, the most accurate are in the Exhibit 2, uh, the chart that says total expense, and then you've got, we've broken it down into programs, hero debt, employee costs, administrative costs, and others. So I think to add up employee costs and administrative costs, we, we, don't, we don't see that as valid. And Stephen, if you could... And explain the administrative costs versus employee costs so you can have a better idea of what the distinction is between the two. Sure. So would I, it I have just, been better to just separate it, the two and create it a different column instead of all under administration? We didn't. I'm, I'm sorry, but we didn't put them all under administration. I mean, there are some, there are 355,000 in administrative costs. There are uh, 1.017 in program costs, but I need to point out that, that the other um, are actual projects. Those are not administrative costs. Those are the, the, the numbers I gave you before, the management consultant, the marketing, the pro pro projects and professional services, and parking facilities. So, so for example, if you have a consultant that's going to help on, on architectural drawings or a consultant that's going to help on a specific project, we don't consider that an administrative cost. We, co we consider that a cost associated with a program or a project and that's why we broke it down into the two. I think the general understanding of when you talk about administrative costs is how, much, how many dollars does it take to just keep the office open, and that's why we broke them down into different components. Okay, because my only issue is, and what I'm getting at is this, is that I'm only going by how you all describe. So under the 1116690 one dollars uh, well, it says adopted budget or proposed budget. Um, it says administration expense. So if, if some of those are, are should be projects, then maybe it should be removed from under administrative expense to project expense because well, you do have a line item for projects. Well, that's why, that's why we broke it down on the chart to describe better what those costs are in terms of one being employees and one being specific expenses that are not necessarily a program, but 
or associated with a specific program. So Council, Councilman, if I may, there's also in the administration division that you're looking at, mm -hmm. you had the debt service in there, which in the chart that Stephen provided, it basically showed it as debt service, but that's, that's in that division that you're looking at as administration. Right. All of it is uh, uh, in administrative uh, cause. Okay. Yeah. And, and where does. we found, like, the, the, to bulk of them all into the same category is somewhat misleading in that the hero debt you have to pay is not nothing you can do about it so it's so what not so what I would uh, probably suggest hope for next year that you just carve out uh, their debt services as debt as a separate as a separate cost so that it's not misconstrued as administration I understand okay we, we can do that thank you and then um, what I like thank you what I've just provided also my colleagues uh, with because what I'd like to see happen is more um, um, projects happening within the neighborhood uh, itself. And I have provided uh, to all of my colleagues a list of pictures that I've taken over the course, almost 240 pictures you're going to be looking at tonight in your packet. But these are some of the blighted area, and I, and I heard Stephen say that, that there are only two, you're going to do two demolishing? Well, in order for In the southwest area, only two? Right, we, have, we have two that we can do right now. Um, with, our code compliance division is working currently with, with our city attorneys uh, to come up with more. There are, there are other properties that are close to being ready. The problem is, obviously, we don't own these properties. So for us to have the legal right to take those properties and demolish them, there are substantial legal hurdles we have to overcome. We work with the attorneys in order to do that, and we're working together. And it's my understanding from talking to uh, uh, the, the code enforcement division that we are very close to being ready on on uh, at least two more uh, and there's several others on, on the list that are in well in process right now we've got two that we well one that we are li within a matter of two weeks we should be ready to demolish and the other uh, the other maybe that's just another month or so down the road or a month down the road but uh, we're, you know, we are starting. We and what's more, we made sure that we still have the $191,000 dedicated to uh, demolishing these properties. So we have the money to do it because I guess in the past we haven't always had the money to do and it. I, and I think on that, I think we've got a batch. The next batch looks to be almost 20. And again, we just have to follow the due process, and they'll, they'll as they roll in, as and as, all all of that is in this budget. Uh, well, I don't know if you add up all the 18, how many? Uh, I, well, I don't know that that would cover 18 properties, but it, it would, I, for example, the property that we're, ten, that we're just we're ready to go on, 605 Southwest Fifth Avenue, we have a, our quote is for about $13,000. Um, so, you know, at that price, you know, if we need more, we'll come back to you. We, we, uh, you know, that's a high priority to us, as I know it is to you. Yeah, I think it's going to be less about money than it is on time, just because the process well, is what it is. Well, my, my, problem, my problem is that we, um, and I'm done after this, my problem is that we have, uh, we demolished a building behind in the Park. How long did that take? And where did that money come from? Well, we, we own the property, and that money came from the general fund. I, okay. I want to yeah, say I, I can speak to that. It's, so it's, it's, much, it's much easier to demolish a property uh, that you own than private property that has to go through due process. So, the, so if, if that is the case, um, and we've been at this for three years, to be honest with you, for almost four years trying to get these buildings demolished, um, and you're saying that that's going to be in this in this budget. In other words, my area, the, 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 the crews, the inmate crews, we're paying for that. What is the scheduling for that, Stephen? I mean, because it's it's horrible. Have you seen the 200 pictures I've taken? I have personally? seen. Yes, sir. Yes, I have. Uh, I I would really have to defer to Dennis on the inmate scheduling. Because I want to make sure that there's appropriate dollars if there needs to be a third crew just so that that area could be consistently clean and consistently done, just like in any other community, in any other major thoroughfare, 
all of it, whether it is high grass, whether it is paper, it's, I mean, it's really ridiculous. So I, what I'm asking you is, and within this expense, in this two million point five, is any of that going to be cleaning up the southwest area, or what? No, uh, it's, if I, I mean, I can answer that. The, the level of service that's there is what's in the budget. It's a status quo budget. There's a distinction between what the inmate crews do on public property versus private property. No, this is our property. Some of those pictures are our property, well, George. The bulk of those properties, though, my understanding, are private property, in which no. case we, well. No, I disagree. No. Well, I Most think. of those properties are, there are properties that the city has control over, whether it is the 4th Street uh, area uh, um, or... Uh, some of the uh, the highness of the grass. Some of that is 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 majority uh, the alleyways. The majority of that um, is city. So I, I, I like to see some dollars put into place. And I'm, I'm asking again: Is in your budget that you're presenting a, a, a dollars in here to ensure to facilitate uh, this neighborhood that uh, street cleaning? Uh, all of that needs to be within this, within the inmate crews. Is that what you're saying that you're going to do? Yes. It's, it's basically status quo service. Whatever level of service is, that's what's funded. Okay, so status quo service now is not, it's very low, if according to what I, what, what I see and live in. So if that's status quo, then how do we bring it up? Again, I think it'd be helpful if we have uh, if street addresses associated with It's those the things. entire neighborhood. It's well, just, it just take one drive. Well, but and I, I, when, I, when I was going by, I saw, I saw about maybe 10 homestead, uh, either trucks going through. So uh, our staff is not like they don't see it passing by. I mean, I, I mean, I'm out there. So if this is status quo, how do we bring it up to where that we can eliminate the blight in which the CRA is initially created for? Again, it would be just a policy question of where to transfer the funds from other areas. Okay. All right. So, um, the, with the commercial facade, um, can we move? If, uh, can we move some monies uh, to put just to facilitate the cleanup of, of, of this of this of, of my of this area? of the southwest within the CRE boundaries. Sure. Okay. Thank Just you. Just it be a function of how much you'd like moved over there and that's a policy decision for you all to make. We're you know, we're flexible in terms of your priorities and it's it's your budget. It's the monies can be moved in any direction you'd like. All right. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. Yes sir. Um, Mr. Molinata Thank you, Mayor. Um, uh, you know, once I, I just received this packet and just started going through the pictures, um, the first, the first question, the only question I wrote on this is how much of this, how much of these items are are ours that we're responsible for? And so, would you guys go through this list and kind of go down and see? If I don't, I don't. Unless there's addresses on those lists, I mean, I think that there is a big distinction between private property and public Correct. property, and. and I think a lot of the code violations speak to you know, people not maintaining their properties, and so they have a process they go through. Right. And that's a big distinction between that and if, if our public properties aren't, aren't being cut, I mean, if, if the service is something you want more regular, then, then obviously we'd have to go through and assess, you know, what, what level of service it's, you could cut once a week. You can cut once a day. You know, it's really a function of. And, and my and the reason I ask this, and my question and my concern is just what we're responsible for. I hope that we're being responsible for, and uh, in the sense of any of these items here that are that are ours, that are let's say they're clearly uh, out of um, out of shape or out of uh, what would be our normal. Or yeah, I, I just then. don't know which ones right. are. I mean, so then, uh, so I guess my question would would be to to then the councilman Williams and and how do we, what's your thought process with uh, staff in order to address these issues that you brought before us? And because I could definitely see that there are pictures here that are concerning. I know there was homes here, and I understand the sense of if legally if it's not ours, we can't touch it. And so 
Uh, but I guess my point is hopefully we have some type of um, line item or, or, or kind of a to-do list on, on these and, and to identify what we need to be responsible and what Thanks. we're not supposed to be responsible for. What we can do, if you'd like, is we can, we can do an inventory of the city properties and we can do an assessment, a staff evaluation of what's happening to those. And uh, we can also, of the pictures, if we have the addresses, we can determine which ones are private and then we can see have they been cited, they have not been cited. In many circumstances, what you'll find uh, in the area is that a lot of the violations that speak to aesthetics are uh, trash and overgrown uh, vegetation. And typically, you know, the procedure from code has been if they see that on a private property, they are to cite and go through the process. In some cases, it's a game of cat and mouse, as you know. Mm -hmm. And then some, some unsafe structures are what I think the councilman was talking about in terms of some of the demolitions. All those on the private side, we have to go through due process. But if we have, if we notice some, if we get the addresses on uh, on the photos for those private properties that haven't been cited, we're more than happy to go out there and do that. And, and then in terms of the private, on the public side, we had outlined initially in terms of the, the, the uh, trustees what the level of service was going to be. And so we have a schedule and we have a route on that. If, if there's something that you want expanded, then we'd need to have a sense of how far you want to expand it, how far into the side streets did you want to go, and then we'll have to cost out for you what that increased level of service would be. The same applies all over the city is, you know, on all our, our main corridors, you know, we made the decision long ago, I guess, when we had this discussion as a group four or five years ago is at least figure out which main corridors you want to have this improved service and that's why we've added uh, the trustees to the program and we have a map that kind of outlines which areas we cover and which we don't. But there'll be plenty of side streets all over the city where the trustees aren't going that deep in because obviously you need more personnel in order to do that. Mr. Manager. You asked me a question. Uh, yes. No, I just, I just was, I'm sorry. Just uh, my last uh, point is just, I guess, a priority list or something. So that, at least that we're seeing, you know, this, so that it comes before us and we could make a better decision. Right. On this. I mean, governmentally, it's, it's, it's for us. This is the process we go through. Mm -hmm. Each of those pictures, if we have addresses, is it pri private or public? And then also, did we cite it or didn't we? And right. if we cited it, where is it in the process? And where have we been with this property owner over time? That kind of helps us understand a little bit of the history. Of some picture. of the things that I've seen some improvements on is the, the quantity of debris that's all over the place. And it, that also runs in cycles as well. What I can say is that the thing that strikes you the most right now is the overgrown grass. On the other hand, you have had you know, a lot of rain, and the question is how many of these properties have been cited, how many of them need to be cited. In terms of your main corridor and trash, I think if you look at what the main corridors were five years ago and where they are today, no question that the trustees are making some impact on the trash on the main corridors. As you get into some of the side streets, it's a little different because you don't have that level of service. And like I said, this service is a function of money, and money is a function of priority, so it's really up to you to decide if you want to expand service. Look, this is what we do. You, you give us the money, we'll, we'll do as much as you want us to do. Thank you. And, uh, Chief, and, and uh, Mr. Williams, and then Vice Mayor. I was going to say, uh, th uh, through the manager, you know, Chris is in charge of code enforcement, and she's, she's, she's here tonight, and I think she can answer any of the questions that you all have about private uh, opposed to city. And also, she could also answer, answer to the fact that uh, whether well, they've been cited or not, if, if, if you all want to go through that. So, so Crystal? May I? Yeah. Mr. Williams? Yeah. No, what, what I'm saying is the CRA said that they're paying for two inmate crews. So if they're paying for two inmate crews within the CRA area, then it shouldn't look the way it looked. So that's why I'm asking for a schedule because if it's paying for out of CRA dollars, they have to remain into the CRA area. Am I not right? 
No, we can yeah, absolutely we can so, we can provide me, you the schedule. Right, but what I'm saying is, is that if that is the case and the inmates uh, come out, how many times a week? I'm not sure. Dennis? How long do they stay? I'm not sure. But if they, if there are two inmate crews we're paying, then um, I should not be seeing. Um, carts from grocery stores still in the same place for three days. If, well, that, that if, wouldn't if, necessary. But that wouldn't necessarily be though uh, trustees. That would be a code, code, code enforcement issue. Not, not only code enforcement, but what do you call it? QRT. So if they're going throughout, you know, they should not be in different places of the Southwest. They should not be carts there for two to three days. Dennis, you want to go through sure. the schedule? And if so, we're paying for trust, if we're paying trustees for the Southwest area for them to pick up paper, maintain certain areas in it, then why is it placed looking the way it looks? Well, I would I would suggest that it depends on the corridor where you found the cart. So if you if you found a corridor on a cart that we cover and it's <clears throat> and it was there for a week, then clearly somebody didn't do their job right. I would suggest it's more likely that if you found items uh, that have been there for a long time, either it's private property or it's on a corridor that our trustees don't cover. But I think it's a fair question to ask, what's the schedule? Dennis, do you want to go through what the two crews do sure. and what the process the, is? The, 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 when we did it five years ago, we asked for three inmate crews. The thing is, the state didn't have any more. We're still on the list. Other municipalities and other cities are asking for inmate crews like we are. So we're still on the list to get an extra one. Hopefully that happens one day. Um, to answer Mr. Uh, Councilman Williams' uh, question, they start at 8 in the morning and leave at 2.30. Uh, they do, when, five years ago when the council approved the corridors, they uh, handle those corridors in the CRA area. The pictures that I saw were in Avocado Villas, which that's not one of the corridors So where the chopping carts were at. So once the council tells us they want more of an area, then we'll make sure the schedule works on that. So they go from where to where, Dennis? Five, five years ago when we brought the... No, I'm saying the inmate crews, where do they go from where to where? The CRA area. Right, but from what street to what street? It'll be uh, it's towards the Lausner Park area, Chrome Avenue. They do the Chrome Avenue area, Southwest 4th Street, Lucy Street. Those are the areas that we do, the Maori, those are the areas that we handle. Redland Road, we didn't go back to Avocado Villas that far. We stopped at so Redland Road. So you don't Road. go to Blakely Park? Blakely Park? Yeah. Yes, sir. We, well, well, our, that's where the shopping carts were right there on the right-hand side. Parks and Rec crews are there. Those, those should be picked up. Okay. All right. So I wouldn't say it would be the inmate. I would say it would be well, my staff. Right. Well, it's a combination. Yes, sir. Yeah. So uh, I think um, in, 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 in my conclusion of, of, of all of this is that, um, you know, it, it shouldn't have, you know, we go through this every year. I feel like I go through it every six months, um, you know, in bringing the attention. We clean it up, we hit it, and then it's, you know, it's, nothing has been continued uh, so on a course of action. And what I did email uh, you, it's George and staff, was that, you know, to do a monthly or semi-monthly walk around so that those things can be identified. So I did put a plan of action in, in my proposal as it relates to the email that I sent um, that, you know, that will be the suggestion so that we're all on the same page. And did I not, I did include that in there as part of a recommendation of what I believe that we can preempt this problem from continuing because it's just, it's just getting worse. It's not getting better at all. All right. So monies that need to be shifted uh, uh, in, so that we can take care of, of, of some of these other uh, areas that, uh, that we do have control over, uh, then, you know, that needs to be done. And thank you, Mayor and Elvis, for your indulgence. Okay, Vice Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. I just wanted to touch on a couple of issues. I know every year you guys have brought the CRA budget, and every year I, I've also echoed some of Councilman Williams' complaints, and that is we have a lot of our general fund monies or, or general fund services 
being paid for out of the CRA, almost like it's it's covering some of our what should be under the general fund. So I do commend you for moving the police and the code officers out of the CRA budget and into the general fund. And then from our budget meeting, my understanding is is that this is this is this year, but next year the goal is to then move the other police officer and other code enforcement officer out of CRA and into the general fund, kind of as a transition. That's the goal. On the other hand, I don't know next year's numbers and what we're facing. So like this year, we pledge to do our best effort, and this is the best effort this year. Next year, you know, we'll, we'll do our best effort, but until the numbers come in, I, I, I couldn't tell you 100 percent. Okay. I mean, because the last I voted against the CRA budget last year for that reason, because I felt that we we should be using the CRA dollars for, for bigger projects, for investing back into the CRA, for revitalization, you know, versus kind of helping out the general fund make ends meet. And so that was something I voted against this year. You know, I see you guys are making efforts to, to reverse that trend where we're freeing up some monies to hopefully be utilized for um, more investment into to the CRA itself. And so that's why I'd like to see continue for next year. So. Also, if I could add, this may be the time to discuss this, even though we can kind of talk about it in the general fund budget. But as you'll see from the slides from the general fund budget, you know, we've had this conversation every year, and I feel kind of sad to say it, but the truth of the matter is you have almost double your population, and you have less revenue than you had uh, when you had more, less, almost half the population. So. The struggle for you as an organization, and I feel for all of you, is you have more demand for service because you have more people, and your property assessments are half of what they were in 2008. So as people say, we think we should have more service, I couldn't agree more at every level. Police, code enforcement, parks, at every level, we should have more service. It's a function of your, your, your property values are half of what they were, and you have more population. So it really is, it's a function of choices at this point because if there's an expectation for more services, well, with more services comes more money and absent tax increases or cuts in other areas of service, it really is a function of choices. And that doesn't mean you're wrong for wanting more. It's just we all have to be realistic in terms of how, where, as it is, you don't, you don't, you don't have the money to pay for what you have now, let alone more. Right. No, I understand that. It's just if, if we're, I think the CRA has a function and has a purpose, and it was created for a purpose. And so to me, that purpose isn't covering general fund expenses, although I do understand that the problem grub that we have, and that is essentially that we don't have any money in the general fund either, so then to transfer these over causes additional strain on the general fund. So I understand that we've and, had that. And also in neither the CRA budget or the uh, general fund budget do your revenues meet your expenses and so as it is you're you're in a gap situation to begin with so as you say okay let's shift from one budget to another all you're doing is creating more of a problem or a gap in the other budget so it it, it really doesn't make a difference one way or the other it's still the same problem is there's just not enough money to go around for additional services. Right. No, I understand that's why I'm not asking for additional services, but I am saying that we should allocate the services where they should be paid from so that we can at least try to utilize the CRA dollars for what I think they were intended for, and that is, you know, more revitalization, creation of, you know, a buzz within that Southwest District or the CRA District as a whole. So just want to make sure that I'm on the record with that. I do commend you again for moving the officers in the code for both code and police over to the general fund this year. Uh, so at least I think we're moving in the right direction, and then I understand that next year is its, its own little challenge, and we'll deal with that as we as we see fit and as we can get there. Um, the other thing too, just to kind of briefly discuss the issues that we're talking about on on some of these right of way issues, because it affects in the in the northwest as well, which is outside the CRA. But but while the the issue is open, I'd like to discuss it. And as we also have the problem where I think years ago they changed the code to declare that the resident or the homeowner is responsible for all maintenance and pickup of all that stuff within public right of way, which it's technically city-owned property, but we put the burden on the, on the individual property owner. And so what keeps happening is, is we have alleyways as well in the northwest, and it would also exist in the southwest, and people are illegally dumping and throwing trash there. And then what happens is code enforcement comes to enforce that, and they write the citation. Even though it's city of Homestead right away, it's for our electric utilities to access mm -hmm. poles, they're now citing the homeowner for this trash because someone complains about it or broken bottles or the glass. And so, you know, there, there is some issues that I have there in the fairness aspect and that I think it's... 
it's not right to have someone else causing problem and exciting these properties, these private property owners for right of ways that are that are for the city. And so I think it's something we need to look at as far as addressing it more policy wise. I don't know what the solution is because again I understand the issue of not having the monies or the resources to to maybe necessarily clean up those areas. But just something that you know while this global discussion is taking place, I wanted to throw out there for. Further discussion, I was going to raise it at some other time, but it seemed ripe now. And so you I have another item to add to your list, which is graffiti. And so you're a private property owner, and all of a sudden overnight somebody puts graffiti on your building. You didn't do it, right? And yet, that's, so who should clean up that graffiti? But that's different because I own the building. And so then it's my, it's kind of the well, risk you run is when you own the building. Now, in this case, I'm talking about city of Homestead-owned right-of-way that I, as the property owner, can't develop, can't put a fence around, can't can't do anything to defend but I'm responsible now for the code citations that come my way when somebody else actually takes action on it. So that's the problem I have more so than anything else. But just wanted to throw it out there for discussion, put it on people's radar because it recently happened with a local homeowner and I got the phone call and I went and looked and again it was in City of Homestead. And it was, it was some of our, our, our alleyways are paved which aren't as problematic. This was one that was all grass so there was a whole other issue with overgrown grass as well. So just, just kind of wanted to state that I know we, we passed an ordinance years ago Again, I think it's a cost-saving measure, but it also has unintended consequences that, you know, I think are unfair. So. I understand. Again, it's one of those things. If you shift the yeah, burden of the cost over to the city, it's just another dollar problem. Understood. So, okay. Thank you. Mr. Burgess. Thank you. Stephen, just to go back over one thing. You stated you've got $100,000 for related expenses or future unforeseen. And, and can you go into a little more detail of what? You foresee taking $100,000? Uh, I can address that because we've you. had this discussion and I, I asked, uh, we've actually we've had a lot of discussion about it. As we're thinking through the next phase of projects for the downtown, we anticipate we're going to have expenses. At some point, hopefully in the next few months, I'm going to come back to you with some uh, suggestions for financing or funding these projects. We anticipate between Lasmer Park, the parking garage, and the library, assuming you all want to do those, we're going to need to come back with somewhere around 40 to $50 million worth of financing or funding from outside sources because we know we're not going to get it from uh, the general fund. And so assuming we go forward with those projects, we need some money in the CRA budget to help us with architecturals or property acquisitions or uh, appraisals. Each of these projects are complex and are going to have associated expenses with it. So we've, we've kind of earmarked it in, in the marketing category, but the truth of the matter is it could be for appraisals, which we've been doing a lot of between the library project, the Lozner Park, the parking garage, problem. each of these things, if we're going to anticipate how much they're going to cost us and how much financing we're going to need, we need to do appraisals of the property and start having conversations with the property owners. And so we put a very small amount aside for these ancillary costs. However, I would suggest to you that by the end of the year, if we have a 40 or $50 million discussion at some point, we'll know you may not need those because you're going to lump all those expenses into the larger uh, uh, project and we'll figure out the other funding sources or you may need more money uh, uh, right now, we don't know. I know for certain that we're going to have a whole collection of additional appraisals we're going to need to do if we're going to do uh, the larger garage project. So as things come to mind, appraisals being one, architectural services being another, but it could be something completely different once we have the larger conversation. We have, we anticipate by the end of October, we're going to have a uh, uh, um, we're going to appear before the county and their board that governs the PTP funds. And at, at that point, we're going to have an, a sense of whether they will bless the concept of the garage and some of the transportation issues and whether some of those mon monies can be used. And that's going to be one large piece of the three projects. Uh, and then we'll have better answers for you, hopefully, by November or December at the latest. Thank you, Mr. Manager. Uh, I also want to say thank you because I know this is my eighth budget cycle sitting up here mm -hmm. and it's been a constant battle of trying to remove those police officers and the code enforcement and this is the first time uh, out of everybody's concern it's been done so thank you to you and your staff for, for figuring out a way to get that done and with that thank you mayor yes sir mr. Williams yes um, speak uh, speaking of um, alleyways uh, and rights of property 
uh, there was an ordinance passed back in 2000, uh, matter of fact, the ordinance number 2009-06-15, and it deals with specifically the city uh, perhaps making the property owner responsible for the right-of-ways, alleyways, or something that's abutting their property. And my issue was it, and I'm bringing it back before council to redo this ordinance because the problem is, is that you, we gave, we said to the residents, you're in charge of this, um, but it wasn't that we gave it to the residents saying you're in charge of it, and uh, it's at 100 percent. It's already fixed up, you know, so if something happens, then it's your responsibility. No, when they passed this ordinance, the ordinance was that um, you're responsible as a homeowner to make sure that if there's a crack in your sidewalk, the city's not responsible for it, even though the city gave it to you with a crack in it, it's not your responsibility to fix it. And so, especially in the Southwest and the Northwest, this is very, this ordinance is very problematic, and that's why we have these overgrown lots, overgrown, because it's on, it's, a lot of it is in the, uh, in, in those areas in which we have, in, in an ordinance, kind of made the residents responsible for in a depressed uh, social economic uh, uh, area and said so they're responsible for keeping up something that was given to them that was not kept up in the first place. And so when the code comes through to cite, they're citing things that the city did not give the property owner something that was in good shape. So how can we uh, say, hey, it's your responsibility now, you must take care of this property, and then it's not being taken care of, then we come in and write a citation for it and make the people pay for it, and they can't afford the citation. So this ordinance is a really a uh, ordinance, uh, 2009-06-1, uh, is an ordinance that adversely affects the Southwest and the Northwest because it's an older community, and we make uh, the citizens in that area are responsible for something they can't even keep up in their front yard. So, of course, we're going to have overgrown lots and all of that. Um, but this ordinance is a ordinance that hurts the residents, does not help them. And the alleyways, a couple months ago, I uh, talked with, through the manager, to there are some alleyways in the southwest. I asked that they be paved so that it would be a safety concern, you know, if we had, and they did. You all paved them. You all made it beautifully. But then there was no maintenance of it. So thank you for doing that, George. But now we have to take it up to the next step. And that's, and I think, uh, Council Michelle, Vice Michelle, this ordinance is the, is a problem for our communities. And maybe we need, need, need to go back and, uh, revisit it and take it out or put a moratorium on it for the Southwest and Northwest so that those properties can be kept up, the right of ways can be taken care of. And then that way, uh, another two years, and we give it back to the property owner and say, hey, we did our job, now it's your responsibility in good care to do it. That may be a, another rule of suggestion to do that. So you help me bring that back to my remembrance. Thank you. But I move, with that, I move the budget. <laughs> is there a second? I second it. There's a second. This is a public hearing. Uh, if, you're, if you're interested in saying anything for or against this budget, you're welcome to come up at this time. Um, Seeing none, close the public hearing. Any final comments from council? Oop. Yes, yes. ma'am. Oh, yeah. oh, You're here on the CRA budget? Yes. Okay. Good afternoon. My name is Soyla Gallegos, and I have a business on Washington Avenue. Um, <clears throat> what I need to find out is when I was hearing about the um, beautification of downtown, it that includes Washington Avenue? Mr. Manager, that's the 200,000. Uh, yeah, actually, we are, um, we, uh, for our last year commercial enhancement grant program, uh, we, we kept most of that money for the purpose of dedicating it towards, uh, the, the improvements on Washington Avenue. We recently actually spoke to Councilman Burgess about this. And uh, we are currently, um, if you're a business owner on Washington Avenue, we're currently uh, talking to your landlords about possibly 
uh, doing some minor facade improvements, maybe paint the building. And we, as a city, also are looking to spend a little money to improve the landscaping and the medians and, and making sure the trees are cut back just so that Washington Avenue can, can uh, look a little bit nicer. Uh, in the near, and, very near future, we're, and, we're, we're set, trying to set up a meeting of all the property owners right now. There are just there are several. And if I can add, uh, also, it is a good opportunity for us to go on the record. I know there's been some rumors swirling with uh, some of the merchants on Washington yeah. Avenue that somehow the city is looking to purchase all the stores and can, and, and tear them down. Just for the record, and we'd appreciate it if you share with your neighbors, mm -hmm. there's not one person on this dais has ever suggested purchasing any of those properties, condemning any of those properties. Uh, in fact, a lot of what the elected body has done in terms of the investments they've made at, uh, with the City Hall particularly is so that those merchants will benefit from the increased traffic. The only property that the city has discussed potential of purchasing or leasing is the, the, the round building at the end of Washington Avenue, the Robert Barnes building, and that would be for potentially a, a, a site of a library. But that's early in the discussions. We haven't had much discussion yet with the council, but not one person here, and if somebody else correct me if I'm wrong, not one person has discussed buying any of those other properties uh, or tearing them down. We're not in negotiations with any property owner to acquire any of those sites. and. That's just rumor. And when do you think they're going to start um, trying to fix our, our street? Uh, well, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, the, the idea is to first meet with the stakeholders and have some discussion, because we certainly don't want to go out there and do anything that people don't want. And the idea is to have the preliminary discussions, go back to the council, make sure that we have the council's blessing, and then uh, we'll implement whatever the plan is. But the first piece of the puzzle is to have the discussion with the stakeholders, which would involve property owners and merchants. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Molinata? Just a quick question. If um, for those, what's, what's the plan for those uh, property of the stakeholders? Um, who are they going to contact or are you going to reach out to them or are they going to reach out to you? Uh, yeah, just, we, just to put that on the record just for now so that they at least understand the first step. Sure. Absolutely. We're re we are reaching out to the property owners. There are there are several of them. So we, you know we have to. We we're trying to get everybody together. Uh, we want to talk to the tenants as well. So we're going to work with uh, um, uh, a lot of the stakeholders in the area that know know that are very familiar with with the owners. Uh, and we're going to uh, you know I expect that to happen you know in the very near future. And, uh, you know, we, we just have to get agreement. We can't paint a building that we don't own. So we just have to get agreement with everybody as to what's going to be done. And we will include, uh, you know, uh, area groups like Homestead Main Street and other organizations, um, you know, that, that know both, you know, the Chrome and Washington area. So that nobody, because unfortunately, um, word of mouth spreads and it's not always accurate. So we have to make sure that everybody is on message here to make sure that everybody understands all we're trying to do is help make it look a little nicer and look a little better and, and that's all we're concerned with nothing else thank you mr. Williams yes I'm sorry I, I apologize uh, let me get this out of the way first of all uh, let me thank George if I did not um, for the way in which you conduct uh, the budget and and Stephen for such a solid budget um, so I'm not knocking the budget. I'm just uh, passionately concerned about the area, and if there's dollars that can be influenced within that, then that's what I'm here to do. My, my, what I did forget um, is since you brought up that $200,000 that's on the commercial facade, you're saying that that is earmarked for Washington Avenue? I'm saying that last year it was earmarked. Uh, uh, for Washington Avenue. So it's going to roll over. And, and it's going to roll over from last year to this year, so we still have that money. Okay. And how much is that? It's about $150,000. And what line item is that? Is that the commercial facade? For commercial, yes. Washington? Yes, sir. So there'll be only $50,000 left from that? 
Is that what I mean? I no, no. We we have the, we budgeted the full two hundred thousand dollars for this year for this coming fiscal year. I'm talking about last year's money. Uh, so it it's, rolls over. It rolls over. Technically, you're not allowed to have fund balance. Right. right. As long as as long as you earmark the project. Right. So what okay. they're doing is the funds from last year will be sitting there waiting to be spent, but that's different from the proposed budget for the, the line item that you're talking about. Right, but so... So it's that line item plus the fund balance that, that is not fund balance, it's earmarked spending. All right, it, w will it be... Would you all be able to just mark that out within uh, just a separate line item of that, George, or no? It says well, Washington Avenue revitalization program. Well, again, my understanding is that. we're yeah. trying to comply with what the county says, because technically, if you don't spend all your money by the end of the year, unless it's earmarked, right, that's it what goes I'm saying. back to the county. Right, but what I'm saying is in your budget for the next time, because we have to, this first budget hearing, next, would you be able to carve that out and say this is how much we are attributing to the Washington Avenue project? Could that, could that happen? I think what you're asking is to change create a new account number just entitled Washington Avenue? Yes, yeah, so, that, so that it's clear. Is that... If, if that's the request of the council, I mean, we could do that. It's not yeah, a problem. Because I don't, so what's the total amount that's rolling over? Uh, well, it's, it's $150,000. Plus, plus another 200000 Well, the 200000 is it's showing as commercial facade grants. Um, so that it, it's in the that's line item it's money. normally in. But that's new money, correct? Yeah, that's yes. new money so this year. It's 150000 plus an additional 200000 That's what I mean. It's 350000 yeah. It It is if you add those two numbers together. Um, yes. yes. Again, we're, we're careful with our I'm language sorry. for a reason. And so okay. That it's so, your marked money that's, that it's in the process of being spent. Right. Unlike what you have... Uh, in your general fund where you, it's the, the rules are a little different. Okay. One more thing. I'm sorry, Mayor. The, on 4th Street, the, um, where the new trees are and the beginning on 4th Street and Flagler, who takes care of those, those, um, uh, the trees and the uh, shrubbery or the beds located in that? Because uh, obviously they've not, and I've had this brought this up every year, they've not done an adequate job. Uh, if you look on some of the pictures, all of those are weeds. I mean, and we paid a lot of money yeah. for that forestry project. And whoever the uh, person is, or company we're using, uh, is not doing their, their job at all. And if you look at some of those pictures, you will see exactly what I'm talking about. Who, who has the contract for, for that project? Is that out of CRA or is that out of general? That fund? would that would be Valley Crest, and that's the it's it's overseen by Parks, but that is the, the contract that we contribute two hundred and thirty thousand. Okay, so this is the actually the third time I bought this. The first time I did a walkthrough with them. And second time uh, the same thing. Now this time it's the same problem that's reoccurring. So while we continue to have business with them, they're not doing their job. That contractor. I mean, because I brought this issue up before. It is it is horrible. The, they don't upkeep. They don't they don't do anything that is uh, that they're is supposed to do. And the, and I've have more pictures even from last year of that. So how do, I mean, George? How do we address that? Because that's uh, a concern of mine that we have this company, Valley Crest, and they and they have done a a horrible job in maintaining that. And I think their contract is almost what seventy, eighty grand a, a year or so. Or uh, how much? I would prefer if Dennis was here. To He's right there, Dennis. Here. Dennis which, I, which contract are we talking about? Sorry? Valley Crest. Valley Crest is over five hundred thousand dollars. It's getting ready to go out for bid. Uh, we're thinking around October, and we should be awarding in December. And, and how much of that goes to 4th Street? On 4th Street? Yeah, remember we went out and did yes, a walkthrough? I don't, I don't know. They don't, I don't have the breakdown. I'm just telling you what the whole budget is. Okay, is that coming out of your budget or CRA budget? Uh, I think that falls under CRA. Okay, so my, my, my concern is, is that they're not doing a good job, and we, you and I, Dennis, we had a walk through and talked about this, and they are not doing a good job at all, and you talk with the supervisor, they are, I mean, it is horrible. The upkeep on it is, is horrible. They've not planted new trees. It's a lot of weeds in the beds. They're not properly maintaining 
uh, that for that kind of money. And so I would request that, George, that you really look into that because I don't feel that we need to award them anything for 4th Street um, because they've not done a good job since they've had the contract. And, Councilman, we, we will go out and, and take a look at that area, right? You can, you can have my pictures. As soon as possible. The uh, beds that you were you sent pictures of uh, from 6th Avenue and Redland Road, the Correct. inmates did that today. We do it on a time basis because Valley Quest has not been awarded that section yet because we're waiting for the new contract. But the but the old section of Flagler to 6th, yes, Flagler to 6th they, they awarded that contract. Yes, sir. Well, if you look at the pictures, that that's... So that's that part I'm talking about. Yes, sir. So they have not done a good job, they, well, at all. And you and I have been through this. We've done a walkthrough with them, and they, 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 they are, they are really horrible at, at maintaining that Fourth Street area. Yes, sir. And I'd also let you know with the CDBG grant that we put in for this year, I uh, made it from Sixth Avenue to Flagler to redo the, all the landscaping. There. Well, I hope it's not through Valley Crest. Uh, it won't be through Valley because we're going to have to figure hard. that out. I, I denounced them tonight. Yes, sir. For Fourth Street. Yes, sir. <laughs> Thank you. But we'll keep a fair and open process. It's <laughs> good. <laughs> 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 Thank my colleagues. Thank you all. Mr. Thank Burgess. Really? Just real quick, piggybacking on, um, on the property owners. I know that I've met with, with Stephen and Robert Barnes, and one of the problems we have on Washington Avenue and the, and the, and the properties there is uh, absentee owners, mm -hmm. not from the area. Somebody, One gentleman's passed away. Now his son has become responsible. We think. We're not real sure who's managing the property and stuff. We've had a, we had a meeting a while back trying to gather the names and stuff <clears> on <throat> just who's responsible to help us over there because, you know, I've been critical a couple of oh, yeah. times at meetings. Uh, and it's kind of tough to even find out who some of the owners are over there. So I know staff is working on that. And then one other thing, just to piggyback on you, Jimmy, because I've spoken to Dennis about it. And what happens, I think, on some of these flower bed type areas that you're, you're talking about is they don't have mowers that can hit them. So they hit them with weed whackers. And, and correct me if I'm wrong, Dennis, we've spoke about this. And what happens is the weed whackers, because they'll do a general area with the mm -hmm. weed eater, and it just keeps going lower and lower and lower. And then eventually you get dirt and then the weeds come in to fill it in. Instead of having the proper uh, uh, lawnmower or whatever it would take to cut the areas. And, and I've seen it in my neighborhood and mm -hmm. I've spoken to Dennis about it. And I see right. yard crews doing it all over town. Um, so I but think my, that's some of the problems that yeah. we maybe when we put out this new contract, Dennis, we need to be a little more specific as to what they're allowed to use when they're mowing specific areas so that we don't end up with these results. Yeah. I will check on that. Now, aren't, aren't they supposed to be planting the trees? They were Thank supposed you, to replace some trees as well, too, Dennis, right? There's uh, certain things in their clause that they have under the contract, like, say, if there's a car accident or yeah. if the tree dies from, like, a disease or anything, they'll replace it. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you. Yes, sir. Oh, okay. Louis Medina, 2449 Southeast 19th Street here in Homestead. Um, I just uh, got a couple of items here. First of all, I'm going to repeat... For all of you, for everybody to be informed what our mission statement is for the CRA. The mission of the Community Development Agency, CRA, is to revitalize the community development area and to provide an economic stimulus such as the, value, the future value of property within the community redevelopment area is optimized. Let's all keep that in mind. Why? Here in the city of Homestead, 63% of the merchants are Latino-owned. 29.1% of that are owned by Latino women. I'll give you a good example. What's happening on Washington Avenue? All those merchants there are Latino and Latino merchants. Every time they call City Hall, nobody knows what's going on. They know they're building, which we have nicknamed the White House across the street, but nobody knows what their future is. CRA has not approached any of those merchants. The lady that was up here before, she can tell you, and every time a question is asked, no matter what department is called, nobody has an answer. Nobody knows what the future is. That's why those rumors have started. Because in the past, when you gentrify an area, that's what happens. When you come in large urban cities, that's exactly what happens. We need to change this and inform the public, because an informed citizen is better for our community. Now, what we need is... All these monies that I hear here, they're not going in the southwest area. They're not going into the minority businesses. 
And this is bad, real bad. I mean, when you have 44% going into administration, any other city nationwide, some are called CRS, CRAs, others are called urban enterprise zones, 15, top 20% goes into administration, no more than that. I never in my life heard 44% into administration. And the amount of money that's being spent on marketing and the people on Washington Avenue, the merchants that are across the street from the new city of Hope don't know what's going on. What's going on here? This doesn't sound right. Another thing, CRA has the power to hire more police officers. We need them, especially for those present merchants and future merchants. Usually you hire three, not take away. That's what that money's there for. Why? Because when people come to shop, they want to feel safe when they see CRA police officers there. And we need them. Like before gentlemen said, population has grown. And if the population grows, we need officers there. They're first responders. Keep that in mind. Ladies and gentlemen, we're all sitting here. We're talking about CRA monies. That's our money, whether you pay it locally, the county, state, or federally. It's our taxpayers' money. Let's use it wisely, and let's stop the what we call the shell game. Let's stop that, and let's put the money. The council member here is right. Why is all this money being spent? We don't see it. Just take one ride around in the, in the southwest area, in the CRA area. And we'll see, is the money being properly spent? Why don't we just have an audit? And there's nothing to hide. Let's get an independent order and make sure everything is done right. Compare it to other cities that have CRAs and urban enterprises and so on, and see if it's being done right so we won't go through all of these millions of dollars. Thank you very much. Have a nice evening. Thank you, Ms. Waldman. Thank you. Um, my question is to Dennis. Um, we were talking about the Valley Crest contract, and I don't remember um, what was in the contract before, but do they do, do you allow for um, upkeep of the grounds of the, of the gardens or whatever as far as weed control and fertilizer? I mean, is that included in their contract? Fertilization and all that is in the contract, but you had to pay extra for that. Unless, like, something is, do you have a disease or anything like that in the grass, like chinch bugs or anything like that, that we ask for. Uh, usually, like, we do the football field, we'll do fertilizer, which we have to pay. So those are kind of, like, different items we do. Uh, just to let you know, do I think the next, this contract that's coming up is going to be a lot higher than it is now because we did right. add a lot more landscaping in the city. Right. And it's going to probably be very, very high this year. And if we add on more, it's going to be more. My son has a similar business to this in um, East Coast of Florida. I won't say where, but you know it's very similar to to these high-end companies, and they always allow for um, the, the the weeds, you know, and and spraying your chain leaf within their contract, which would eliminate a lot of the, as Mr. Burgess said, the weed whacking and things that are going on. And the mulching, I mean, it's all part of a, it's all part of a big package. And you can't just go out and hire a company just to go in and mow and weed eat around the edges. You have to have maintenance in order for it to look good. And that's probably the biggest complaint I get <clears throat> is the way that we maintain our, our, and we don't have color, we don't have the flowers, we don't have the things that we all want. But as the city manager said, we're working on half the budget that we had when, when we had half the population. So, um, but I just wanted to, to remind you that when we do start negotiating with bidders, that you include a source of um, maintenance within the, the grounds itself. And that's on everything. Yes, ma'am. And also, um, congratulations, good budget. Very nice. Um, I've been on the phone w before I got here listening to everything. And um, um, you worked really hard. And welcome, welcome, welcome aboard. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Williams? Um, uh, um, let me just clear something up. Uh, and, um, and I'm taking up for staff at this moment. Uh, this staff and this board has done the best job in articulating 
our policy in which we said as a board there's never been any malfeasance, any misappropriation of funds through CRA. The staff, our auditors are sharp. Our manager has the full integrity to, to, and our director to ensure that these funds are spent the way they're supposed to be spent. I would do respect to the comment, but um, you, you are, I've, so I don't want it to be misconstrued that this board has allowed any um, misappropriation of funds. I question priorities. I never question how the money, you know, if we're doing what's right. And the money is being spent in the Southwest. Can I give you an example? The commercial, the residential uh, facade grants, those were done back in when I first got on council. Those were my initial projects. We have done almost 30 to 40 houses within the Southwest because of these grants um, um, and to also some of these businesses that are applied. So, so this CRA is on top of its game. It does not misappropriate funds. And so I can't sit here and say that uh, I can agree with all of the comments that the presenter made. Um, um, and uh, the, the staff does an excellent job to ensure that our priorities are met. And so I needed to say that, didn't want anybody to think, these are my pie charts. <laughs> and so, you know, um, this board has high most integrity. And each council person up here, including the mayor and the vice mayor, are high, high integrity to ensure that these budgets are, are moved and processed and that they are the will of, of the people. And so all due respect to the speaker, it, they do what they're supposed to do with the money that we allot. And so I needed to say that and didn't want our staff to be or, or council to be beat up on because of, of that. Okay? So with that, Mayor, can we do move on with the order today? <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Williams. Uh, we have a – I did close the public hearing. We do have a motion and a second. Any final comments? Roll call, Madam Clerk. Board Member Maldonado? Yes. Board Member Burgess? Yes. Board Member Williams? Yes. Board Member Waldman? Yes. Board Member Fairclaw? Yes. Vice Chairman Shelley? Yes. Mayor Porter? Yes. The motion carries. Any reports? Any additional reports, Mr. Manager? Uh, any public comments? We've had public comments. What I'd, what I'd like for us to do is there was a, a question that was proposed by the Vice Mayor and Mr. Williams about that one code, Joe. Uh, the, the code mm. question. Oh, ordinance, ordinance zero, about, zero nine dash about zero six dash fifteen. We'll, we'll look it up and well. Uh, but in addition to that, one of the things that I think we need to talk about as a as a body is the Southwest Master Plan and is it helping or is it hurting mm -hmm. the opportunity for the Southwest community to uh, to flourish? Mm -hmm. There are there are some concerns that maybe we've got some things buried inside that plan that um, are not helping. We don't have to throw the plan away, but I think we need to tweak this plan to allow um, a little bit more flexibility for people when they want to come. It's a little constrictive. So, and the only way that I know to get it, it back on the table is to get it back here first and let this body decide as to whether or not send it back to Planning and Zoning Board, let them tweak it. But I think we need to talk about that as, as a way to free up the opportunities for the, the, the Southwest community. Okay. Yes, sir. Any opposition to that? Nope. Um, Ms. Wallman, did you have a comment? Okay. Um, is there a motion to adjourn? Move it. Is there a second? All in favor? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you, everyone. Give us about five Thank minutes. Thank you very much.